everyone, it's Reagan and welcome back to another vlog. I'm coming at you in a very cozy fit because there is a literal blizzard happening outside right now. I'll show you the snow in a bit, but it is currently Monday um, evening by the lighting. And uh, I wanted to start a reading week vlog with you guys. Um, I'm really excited about my February TBR, so I'm hopeful that I'll be doing a lot of vlogs this month. And I'm also coming off of a bit of a vlog hiatus. I haven't vlogged in the past like a week and a half because I've been spending all of my time watching K-dramas and not really reading. <laughs> um, and this past weekend, I literally did nothing but marathon a single show. So, I'm looking forward to getting back into reading. Not that I won't be watching K-dramas, but trying to find perhaps a little bit of a better balance. But without further ado, let's chat about the two books on this vlog's TBR. So the book I hope to read from beginning to end and be like the primary book for this vlog is Ray Bearer by Jordan Ifweko. Um, I'm really looking forward to this. I picked it up back in the fall and it's been very much near the top of my TBR ever since. But this is about a young girl who's basically trained kind of in isolation by a distant mother figure. She's basically trained from a young age to participate in this like trial to become one of the crown prince's like closest advisors and protectors. But she's trained for that not to protect him, but to actually kill him. So I think this is about destiny and kind of like choosing your own path. But just the premise of our main character was born to kill someone but maybe she'll change her mind it's really intriguing to me this book is about 340 pages so i feel like it's one i'll be able to fly through throughout the work week so i'm going to be reading this and then kind of alongside um i'm still reading the way of kings by brandon sanderson i'm almost done i have about 290 pages left which obviously sounds like a lot but given the length of this book i'm definitely on the tail end so i'm going to focus on this and just kind of also try to continue to read this i kind of read the stormlight archives continuously throughout the month at least that's kind of how i treat longer fantasy like I'm always reading it, but I have primary books interspersed, uh, if that makes sense. But yeah, welcome to the vlog. Matilda is over there. I'll show her to you, but it is so cold, so much snow. Not that I do anything besides sit in my apartment and read and watch TV, but now I have like the ultimate additional excuse, you know, because there's like two feet of snow outside. I'm not going anywhere, <laughs> but yeah, welcome to the vlog. I'm almost done with work but I have a few, a bit left, so I'll check in in a little bit. Matilda's been hanging out on this chair all day. She hates the snow. I mean, she hates the rain too. She's, you know, just a queen, doesn't like to be bothered by, by the elements. So she's just been lounging on her pile of blankets and pillows on this chair. That's right, very proud of you. Keep up the good work. And for context, I don't know if you guys can tell, but the snow is basically like tire height right now. Um, this is probably not a lot of snow to a lot of people who are used to living in snow, but for me, this is the most snow I've ever lived through. So this has been a wild experience. Um, and it's supposed to continue to snow tonight. It stopped, I think it's like lightly snowing, but it's gonna snow all night and tomorrow, so bit of a winter wonderland out there a very very cold winter wonderland so it is after work I finished up working and um, Clay had some calls so I spent that time reading and I'm happy to report I've already read 40 pages of Ray Bearer and one this hardcover is beautiful but it's so amazing to pick up a book and just realize immediately you're really gonna like it and I can say that with confidence because of the style that this book is written in is something I personally just always pretty much love and that is immediately you're just kind of thrown into this world and it's full of magic and whimsy and it's told in this fairy tale like quality that's so transportive and so full of magic and the writing quality is so beautiful the story i believe is inspired by west african folklore and fairy tale and uh, it's so good i also feel like it kind of walks the line between middle grade and ya and honestly a fairy tale-esque setting in any genre I love like middle grade YA adult I just live for these kind of stories and again the writing style of the 40 pages I've read so far incredible for context more about what this story is about I follow our main character Tara Sai and you open the book when she is a young child and she's basically being raised in isolation in this manor home um, at the beginning of the book too you find out that she is half human half Melu 
based off of like an agreement or a wish that was granted to her mother, otherwise known as the lady. And it's also pretty much discovered that the lady seems to have some sort of agenda as it relates to the politics of this world. And Teresai is definitely central to that, but we don't totally know why or kind of her influences to what she's doing, um, and neither does Teresai. Our main character, as well as not only being raised in isolation, she definitely doesn't have access to kind of all the information of the world. Like a lot of her education is censored. She can't really talk or communicate with anyone outside. So she's quite surprised at the beginning of this book. And she leaves this secluded home to travel to the capital to partake in trials to become one of the crown prince's ray bearers, which are like their closest 11 advisors and protectors. But she does realize that she has some sort of peace in a larger plot because in our main character's blood lies the last remaining wish from her mother's bargain made at the beginning of her life. And her mother wishes her to basically gain and make the prince fall in love with her. And when he does, to kill him. So that's kind of like the opening little bit of this book. And I seriously, like the world and just the quality of the story, I'm just immediately sucked in. And I'm just really intrigued by everything too, because it is so whimsical. The author kind of just like drops you into the world, which I always really appreciate in stories like this, because you kind of have to just piece together the magic. And obviously our main character is kind of discovering a lot of things for the first time as well, given her isolation. So through her, we'll discover a lot of things, but also just like, I love this element of just kind of being dropped into a magical, whimsical place and kind of just figuring things out as you go. It's just a really enjoyable reading experience for me. But yes, so far, so great fairy tale esque writing, and it's beautiful. And I'm curious to see if there's going to be some time skips as we follow our main character kind of growing up, because I do feel like this is going to be prolonged given that there is kind of like a love romance part of it but I appreciate these early chapters of seeing our main character as a young girl as I just feel like it creates uh, more stakes in her growth and journey through these trials but I definitely plan to read more tonight I am gonna go cook dinner and start a K-drama tonight too but I really wanted to share before I did any of that that oh my goodness this is a fairy tale-esque book I love books like this <laughs> Um, and I'm just really jazzed. I just, yeah, okay. Anyway, dinner time. In terms of the K-drama I'm going to watch, I think I'm going to give Goblin another try. One, because I feel like everyone loves that show and I want to love it like everyone. And I watched the first episode, goodness, like a week and a half ago. And I liked it. The maturity gap kind of bothered me, but I've received a lot of like messages. Like I've talked with my friends too who love K-dramas and everyone's like, well, the other romance is amazing. There's great friendship and there is a bit of a time skip. So I'm just gonna see if I can suspend my disbelief and like maybe I'll just get into it. But I know so many of you guys love it. So I'm gonna, I think, keep watching it tonight. Oh, it looks so cold outside. Um, but that's really my plan. I'm gonna watch I'm gonna cook dinner and then watch an episode or two of Goblin and then read more of Ray Bear tonight. It's gonna be a good Monday. <laughs> All right, I have Real Housewives of Salt Lake City on and I'm gonna cook dinner. I have a meal kit tonight um, and it's pasta. So, you know, win, win, win. and the bell peppers together and then I have the pasta cooking along. I'll be ready in like 10 minutes. Love a quick pasta dish. Combine the veggie and the sausage with some sour cream, some cream cheese, some pasta water. Mix and we're done. We're here. Bon appetit. Goblin is up. Pasta is ready to be consumed. Honestly, ideal. It's Monday so I felt like it only made sense to top off the evening with some ice cream. So let the Sunday making commence. 
All right, though, I'm gonna eat this ice cream. I'm gonna watch one more episode of Goblin. I've now seen two full episodes, and I would say overall, I do think the show is starting to grow on me. It's not really jumping into the romance right away, which I was concerned about. And I just love the Grim Reaper character, and I know that they're, and I've already met his like romantic partner, and I just wanna see how that is gonna unfold. And the magic is cool. I don't know. I hear there's a time skip, so I'm holding out on that, but so many people just love it. I'm still calling them out for that maturity gap because I feel like that could have been handled a lot better, even though I know they're like fated to be together. So he's 900 and something years old. Um, but I feel like they could have just waited like five years. It would have been less weird. But anyway, I'm going to watch more <laughs> of his K-drama and then I'm going to get back to Ray Bear. All right, I'm sitting down to read now. Um, but Goblin, I'm, it's so hard with this show because so much of it I love. Like I love the Grim Reaper, I love his romance, I love their bromance, but I'm still just like not particularly interested in the main romance. Um, I hear there's a time skip like halfway through, so I think I'll give it to at least the 50% mark and then I'll just decide to keep watching or to drop it but it's not that I'm disliking it but I just there's so I feel like I would have just liked it so much more and I'm just having a hard time anywho I know the Grim Reaper actor is in another show that just recently aired that's also supernatural so maybe I'll just pivot from Goblin to that it's called like the Tale of the Nine Tales or something like that. It always makes me think of Naruto when I read the title. But I'm going to read now. Um, I'm going to try to get to like the 100 page mark tonight. Um, which I don't think will be too difficult because I'm really liking this book. And I read the first 40 pages super quickly. So I'm going to read. I'll probably do a check in tomorrow. Um, given, getting, given that it's getting a little late. But yes, this is my life. Reading and K-dramas. Hopefully I'm not boring now not that I was ever interesting but I'm I've settled anyway good night <laughs> hello good morning I did stay up reading quite late last night it's snowing <laughs> to add to the mountains of snow we have outside and simply it was too cold for me to get dressed for real today so I'm wearing a fleece and leggings I have my coffee and uh, I do need to run because I have some meetings but I just want to say hello it's Tuesday Clay's sitting there, <laughs> and uh, you know, huzzah to a new day. All right, world, it's lunchtime, and I did the most logical thing possible ahead of all this snow, which was go to my local Japanese convenience store and picked up a bunch of ramen and things to have for lunch. But I'm particularly excited about this because I've never tried this before. It is curry udon. And I'm really jazzed about it. It just looks really, really good. So I'm gonna heat this up and have this for lunch. In case anyone was concerned, Matilda is ultra cozy on her throne of blankets. The smell of this, honestly, I'm thrilled. Curry udon is one of my favorite things to order, um, but I've never tried like instant curry udon. So I'm really looking forward to this. Sometimes it's the little things in life. And I have another just regular udon and ramen. I love instant noodles. Superior instant food. Like, it's the best. It's the most perfected instant food, in my opinion. Then it comes mac and cheese, but ramen first. Hi, everyone. I just wanted to take a few minutes between meetings. I just sit on the couch now with a duvet because it's so cold. Um, to chat about, I have the new D'Angelo Wallace video queued up because I've been watching it in parts. Um, anyway, um, I wanted to chat about everything I was able to read last night. So I was actually able to pass the 100 page mark of this book and I'm really enjoying it quite a bit still. I also want to say there was a time skip, which I was kind of anticipating and I do feel like the author did a pretty seamless job switching from like this whimsical middle grade vibe to a young adult vibe like it's kind of hard to describe but i do really feel like there is a very clear shift and even a little bit of the writing style to kind of bridge these two genres with the age don't get me wrong it's not like it's not just jointed in any capacity and the overall style and magical component to this book definitely persists 
between this time skip but I did want to call that out specifically because I was impressed um, I'm liking this it's a very unique story as we're obviously following our main character and within that time skip kind of get her established within this council she's you know making friends she's very involved with things politically and I think kind of starting in her childhood and then jumping to um, when she's like you know in her later teens provides a lot of necessary context for both this like psychological struggle she's going through and then likely the political struggle um, I definitely have a lot of questions about the politics. There seems to be some non-perfect stuff happening <laughs> behind the scenes. Like, obviously we know the connections to the lady, like she's some sort of rebel in some capacity. She doesn't seem like a good person, but elements of her cause don't necessarily seem all that bad either. Political structure of this empire I have a lot of questions about, given that uh, it's kind of reined in all these different geographical areas and in hopes of trying to create one unified culture through the Empire and the Emperor and the Crown Prince. So definitely have some questions there. Um, the magic is interesting. It's people are, have the ability to have a hollow, which can vary in terms of how it manifests itself. Our main character can like touch people and objects and see their memories and also give memories which is pretty cool um but yeah i'm about a third of the way through i have i'm very intrigued clearly by the politics and kind of the makeup of this world the time skipped i definitely appreciated and yeah this the structure of the council too is pretty cool it's a lot of like found family because they're very close and connected through like magic so they can feel each other and like send stuff to each other it's like this group of people that you've known since your children and you'll always be with each other through the rest of your life like it's a very intense bond um but yeah i'm intrigued i'm gonna keep reading i'm gonna try to get at least past the 200 page mark tonight wrap it up tomorrow um but yeah i'm reading it really fast and so much of this world is intriguing me but i just wanted to give you an update because i was able to read past the 100 page mark last night hi everyone so i finished up work i'm actually gonna start dinner now but i've watched three more episodes of Goblin between yesterday and today and I think I'm gonna put the show on pause again. I'm sorry, I wanna love it so badly because so many of you guys love it so much but it's hard because there's so much of the show I really, really like. It's Grim Reaper, Sunny's character, I even like our main female lead. Like I like everyone separately and most of the time together like the bromance and all of that is so entertaining but the part I just don't like is the central romance and it's just hard and I know it's not like blatantly a romance but it's hard to overlook and it's like kind of ruining my overall experience of the show like I just can't look past it at this point. Um, I'm gonna pick the show up again at a later date. I don't know. Can someone just tell me if there's a time skip? Because <laughs> I've been trying to google if there's a time skip and I cannot figure it out but in the meantime I'm gonna make dinner. I need to figure out a new K-drama to start because I'm sad that I just can't love Goblin like everyone else. But anyway, cheers. Oven ready meals in the oven. I got the oven ready meals this week from HelloFresh and oh my gosh, the convenience. It took me like five minutes to put all that together and put it in the oven. So it's, because honestly I didn't really feel like doing a lot of cooking tonight. So this really actually saved the evening. And a bon appetit everyone. Easy, breezy. Bone apple tea. <laughs> Hello. Dinner is consumed. I've come into the bedroom to do some reading. Um, I've also, random note, I changed my light bulbs to be at 50% lightness at night. And it just provides stellar ambiance, like V cozy vibes. But I'm excited to pick this book up further. I'm really intrigued by this because I feel like it has some of like the classic YA tropes I love, but it also has things that I feel like are really unique about it too, in terms of its plot and its dynamic. The council, I feel like it's constructed in a way that I haven't really seen in a young adult book so far. Um, obviously I'm only about a third of the way through, so I have quite a bit left, but again, my feelings for this so far are really, really positive, and I really like the writing style quite a bit, so. I'm gonna read, I'm gonna ponder my K-drama quandary. <laughs> this is my life. <laughs> Gosh. Anyway, um, you know, maybe have a Pop-Tart. It's getting wild on this Tuesday night, guys. Anyway, okay, bye. All right, TV is off. It's time to read. I'm gonna get past the 200 page mark. Scold me tomorrow morning if I do not. But that is the plan, and then it is time for bed. 
also unrelated my nails really nicely coordinate with this hardcover and I just thought I would give that a bit of a shout out so anyway okay reading time now hi it's late but I've been reading um, I've read 60 pages so I am tracking towards page 200 and honestly I'm really liking this book I really first wanted to clarify because um, I feel like I've referenced that this book felt like a middle grade in the beginning but i really want to clarify too that like but this is very much progressed into like young adult ya in terms of like content but like i would definitely give this like a teen rating in terms of like the romance components and stuff like that so i wanted to call it out but i feel like the fairy tale quality is really carried through i wouldn't say it's as present as the first part of the book which was definitely what drew me in but i do think the story has been very intriguing and has kept me flipping the pages obviously I'm very sketched out by the political world, which I think we're supposed to be. And because our main character was isolated for so long and due to various events within this book, even after that, um, she is very much kind of discovering a lot of things about this kingdom for the first time and is like forming her own opinions and is always very vocal about like what should be done. And it's interesting too, because like these 11 individuals in the Crown Prince are very powerful politically and are very important but they also don't currently have a lot of power and they also apparently like it doesn't feel like they have a lot of insight of how things worked until like they're slowly being trained to take over certain occupations so i'm sketched out by the empire but i'm interested to learn more so i'm gonna keep reading hi back very quickly after i filmed that update but oh my gosh i just read the most wild chapter of this whole book it was so good but oh my goodness <laughs> it's wild excellent that's really low i can say i don't want to spoil anything but wow okay goodbye matilda is having <laughs> breakfast <laughs> but also good morning everyone coffee is acquired and i'm wearing jeans i'm fully dressed let me show it off look at this dressed and ready to face the day <laughs> it's been a few days since i've put jeans on so i'm gonna catalog this as a win also i read a lot last night which is another win Tilda just finished up her breakfast, um, but I'm definitely on track to finish Ray Bear today um, and give you my final thoughts and feelings. It's such a unique book and it keeps catching me by surprise. Um, and I'm, I'm hopefully by the time I finish it, I feel like I'll be able to give like more holistic thoughts. But anytime I like try to like let you know what I'm feeling based off of assumptions, the author kind of like throws a, a wrench at me, which I'm, which I'm liking. It's, it's just, it's such an intriguing story overall. But anyway, I'm about to have a meeting, so I'm gonna sit down and drink my coffee, but just wanted to say good morning, happy Wednesday. All right, folks, it's lunchtime, um, which I'm gonna take some time this lunch to do some reading, which I'm looking forward to, but I am continuing on my instant noodle journey, and this time I'm making a tonkatsu ramen, and I'm gonna add an egg to this, I think and uh, maybe some sriracha, but I've never tried this brand before. So I'm excited to test it out. I'm gonna make it on the stove top, a little fancier version versus the microwave. You know, treating myself this afternoon. It smells delish. Added some sriracha in for some spice. I love instant ramen. It just looks so beautiful. The candle for the ambiance for the ramen consumption. Hi, so I finished up lunch and I just wanted to pop in because I was actually able to read another 50 pages and I'm on, I think, the final part of this book. Um, I have about 90-ish pages left, so definitely on track to finish it tonight and then I can read some of The Way of Kings, but I'm really happy. I've almost read my first book of the month. But Ray Bear is just so interesting because I feel like it's really unique in its structure and its pacing. I mean, with that, I do feel like the author has fit so much in. Like we had a childhood section, kind of a growing up and being settled within this council section, and now a quest and a discovery of like place and purpose within this world and also kind of discovering more about the political behind the scenes stuff. And this book is not very long, but I do feel like the author has successfully been able to fit a lot and not a very much like not a lot of time um which i think is really impressive and i do think she was able to accomplish this because throughout the entirety of the story she's maintained this sort of fairy tale-esque quality to it so because it has this sort of ambiance it doesn't, at least for me as a reader, make me like feel like I need tons and tons of background or tons and tons of like 
drawn out scenes as they like go along their quest. It has a sort of otherworldly quality to it. That being said, when she does give us nuggets about the politics and like the empire and the past, it's been really intriguing and there's definitely elements of like destiny and fate kind of wrapped in all of this. I really like how she handled the romance and just the overall relationships within this book. There's lots of friendship. Um, there's a romance. Uh, I did want to call out there is an ace character within this book. The only thing I would say is like for the most part, because a lot of stuff kind of just happens sometimes behind the scenes generally doesn't bother me at all. It's more coming from a place of like, I would love those scenes. <laughs> like there's particular like secondary romance. I would love to have just like an entire separate book about that, you know? Um, I do wish there was just a titch more about the world also because I think it's so interesting and how she kind of constructed and there's all these different um places with their own culture but they've been kind of a part of this empire and there's definitely this sort of um desire by the current empire to like write over history to create like a unified history which is obviously problematic for a lot of different ways um I'm curious to know how this book is gonna wrap up I think this is the first book in a possible series regardless I'm very intrigued by this world, so I'm just hoping that there's more books. But yeah, I do feel like this is a really unique YA fantasy book. I don't have a lot of criticisms outside of maybe a little more time spent on, you know, giving us some more politics, but yeah, I don't know. I'm liking it a lot, obviously. Midday Matilda update. She's joined by her coworker, Polar Bear. And uh, this is where Matilda hangs because it's so cold. Normally she likes to bask in the sun, but it's just been too cold for her. So she's just been snuggled up on this chair every, yeah, every day. Playing fetch with Matilda. <laughs> or Chase, I suppose. But I finished up work, packed up the old office for the day, and I am also going to sit down and read the last 40 pages of Ray Bear. I'm really liking this quite a bit. I mean, I say, I think my thoughts have been pretty consistent throughout this blog, but I'm gonna sit down right there, read the last 40 pages, finish her up. But first, Billy, I haven't thrown it yet. But first, just, but first, fetch. <laughs> just finished Ray Bear and oh my goodness I loved the ending so much just the writing in this book is so good um I think before the last like 45 pages I was sitting at like a 4 4.25 but that ending 4.5 I can't wait for the next book in this series it just the story felt like such a whole like arc like I feel like we experienced so much and the author was able to condense so much character growth and everything and feeling found family and not very many pages and the next book like there's so much stuff that still needs to happen and there's gonna probably be a time skip and all of that and it's just like very holistic so much of this story too it just has a lot of heart it's a lot of kind of finding like hope in the darkness like redefining and making your own legacy regardless of I guess who you're related to and their expectations for you. There's a lot of conversations of, I guess, legacy as it relates to parents and found family and not just our main character, but other characters in the story kind of carving their own path for themselves and being critical of even the ones that they love and also kind of dealing with the complexity of recognizing when a parent is not being good but also not fully being able to like let go of that parental love with that i do want to provide a trigger warning for kind of emotional and physical parental abuse throughout this story there's so much conversation about family and legacy and stories within this story and because of that the found family component i felt like was so strong there were so many different types of relationships present in this story which i just really love from beginning to end if anything like my only really complaint is that i would have liked a bit more just time spent with some of these characters and more 
insight and discussion of the politics in the world itself because it was so beautifully written and I really loved the layers that the author was able to build throughout the story that I really just wanted just like a titch more um but yeah I really really enjoyed this I would highly recommend this and I have a feeling the next one is going to be so good I also the romance was great the multiple romances were great I hope the next one is multi POV because I have very strong feelings for a variety of characters and I just until this year, want to be in their heads. <laughs> Not that I don't love our main character, Tara Sai. Like even the last paragraph of this book was just so good. Like the conflict between um, like loving someone, but also like wanting to be yourself. It was present throughout it. Like one of just the best examples of this. Wow, wow. Okay, really like this. Off to a great start. I've also read 350 pages so far for this vlog. Um, I'm gonna take a shower now, but I'm gonna think about this for a little bit longer because I love this. The writing style, everything. <sighs> Such atmosphere. <laughs> um, but yeah, gonna shower, cook dinner, watch a K-drama. I started a new one, so I'll talk about that a little later tonight. Um, and then read Wave Kings, but oh my goodness. Strong start to February, everyone. Hi world, I'm freshly laundered and I'm gonna put together a quick dinner because I wanna watch K-dramas and relax. <laughs> Um, I'm like haphazardly just looking at what I have in my fridge and just cooking something based off those ingredients. It's one of those kind of nights. So I'm not totally sure what I'm making yet, but once I figure that out, I'll show you. All right, this is what I opted for. I had some chicken, so some chicken breast, and I'm gonna roast some carrots. I opted for a spicy seasoning blend because I have some leftover homemade ranch from last week from my lunches and ranch makes everything delicious so I'm basically making this dinner to pair with ranch dressing um but yeah so this will be ready in 25 minutes and then I can just focus on my k-dramas while it cooks listening to a 1975 playlist because I'm trying to listen to music while I cook because since work from home I've stopped listening to nearly as much music as I used to but alternative news I'm making some couscous <laughs> to go with the chicken so meal complete meal complete doesn't look like much, but it'll be good. It'll be good. It'll be good. All right, friends, I grabbed a local Brooklyn cider to enjoy while watching my current K-drama. So I'm watching The Tale of the Nine Tales, which has the same actor who plays a Grim Reaper from Goblin. It's a fantasy one. I think it has, it's definitely more mystery with romance. Um, so far I'm liking it. Lots of action. I'm on episode three already, which is how it goes. But anyway, this is the new K-drama I'm watching and I'm enjoying it. Only logical move of the evening is to get some cheesecake and watch more K-dramas. Different location, same activity. <laughs> Still on episode three, by the way. Took a bit of a break to eat cheesecake with Clay. <laughs> All right, TV watching is over. It's time for me to read The Way of Kings. Hmm. I'm gonna try to read as much of this as I can before tomorrow, like end of day tomorrow. Um, I have like 260 pages left, so we'll see. Maybe I'll be able to finish it, but even if I read like 100 or so pages, I will be pleased with that, but I'm gonna read a bit now and then go to sleep. Cheers, it's Thursday. I'm in the softest sweater ever. Jeans and pink socks, so. I got my big blue light glasses on, which I'm also a big fan of, and I'm ready to take on the day. And maybe today will be the day I put my laundry rack away. To be determined though. Well, I might actually do laundry, so now it might make sense for it to, to be out. Anywho, time to get to work. It's been a bit of a day. So Clay picked up Chipotle. T.Y. It's me. Today was a long day, but it's over now. Um, last day of the reading vlog too. For dinner, I think I'm gonna pull out an emergency box of mac and cheese. And I'm gonna watch, I think I'm gonna start, um, I'm really liking Tale of the Night Tale. I really like all the mythology elements. It's honestly like lots of action, like much darker than I was expecting, but I, I'm really enjoying it. But I think I kinda also wanna start uh, like a slice of life, like something a little more upbeat and distracting to watch alongside it. So I think I'm gonna start Hello My Twenties. Uh, I've just heard such good things about it and I like that it's about like a group of young girls growing up in their 20s, you know? 
relatable content. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, so it's the end of the work day. I'm gonna read, I was able to read like 40 pages last night of The Way of Kings, which means I think I've read just about 400 pages. So I'll read more tonight before bed, and I'll probably, my guess is to get like around 450, but Way of Kings is really heating up. Matilda's back from her evening uh, walk. Um, so, you know, uh, but it's really heating up. Obviously, I'm near the tail end and it's just so good. Like, it's so smartly plotted and I feel like it it really uh, like simmers well. You know, nothing is rushed. There's a lot of character development. I'm a big fan. But anyway, if you didn't know this, Matilda sprints, sprints everywhere until she's fed dinner. Millie, where's your bowl? <laughs> she found it. It's over here. <laughs> she's gone. She's ready to eat, folks. Mac and cheese, complete. Hi, I've spent the last three hours watching K-dramas. Um, I started Hello My 20s tonight and it's so charming and cute. I love how like slice of life it is and how it centers around like the lives of these girls like living together. It's just really charming um, and quite the contrast to the intense fantasy K-drama I was watching previously, but I don't know, it's really, really sweet and I'm, I'm liking it a lot and I like their relationships. And I feel like it's only going to get more sweet with time. But yeah, I kind of watched the night away. It's just one of those days. I worked a little later and then I just didn't want to really do anything but sit here and, you know, decompress as it is. But I am going to read a bit now. I'm going to try to read about 50 pages before going to bed. If I do that, then I'll have read about 450 pages for this work week reading vlog, which honestly I'm pretty pleased with. I read a whole book and then got even a little bit further the way of Kings, so we're making progress. But just wanted to let you know that I only watched TV and ate mac and cheese tonight. Hi everyone, it's me, just popping in to end the vlog the next day. Hopefully this was relatively entertaining. Sometimes I get a little self-conscious because my life is not that interesting. <laughs> But I'm happy to say I read some really amazing books. Obviously, my main book for the blog, blog was Ray Bear by Jordan Ifueco. I really, really liked this. Like the more I think about it, it was just imaginative, fairy tale quality. The writing was beautiful. I'm really, 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 really looking forward to the second book. So big fan of this. And then I was able to read 100 pages of The Way of Kings. I'm almost done with this. This will not be in any vlogs, hopefully moving forward. Um, but yeah, that does mean I read just under 500 pages, which I'm always really happy with during a work week, especially because I don't know if anyone else, like at night, if I'm too sleepy, like sometimes it's hard to motivate myself to read, but I'm really loving everything that I've been able to pick up. I'm also starting February out a little strong, especially compared to January when I didn't complete a book till like mid month. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you soon with another one soon.